going to give you a quick overview now of the live config software. This is the software that actually configures the ECU um, to record channels and the frequency that those channels are being sampled at, um, which is the data that you're then downloading and looking at in a live view. So I will quickly load um, a config and uh, it will show on the left an explorer view. This shows the channels that uh, are currently being logged by the ECU and the frequencies that they're being logged at. If I go to view and then do list logged, um, it gives you a better view as to what's currently going on. Um, so we've got different types of channels. AAT, ambient air temperature base is one. That means only um, sample at one hertz or one times a second. If we go down to alternator state, that's a uh, state that will change. So it's it'll, um, it'll say on or off. That's called an event. So we will actually tell it to log changes in the event for alternator state. Um, Barometric pressure, that's one hertz. Brake pressure front, 50 hertz. Brake pressure rear, uh, 50 hertz. Uh, that's a internal temperature sensor on the ECU. So you can see down here, I've got various parameters and I've got different values. I've got this base column here. And I've got a knock column here. So for example, cylinder one knock, when the engine's ticking over, it's in base mode because it's not under high load and there's no knock, hopefully. It will sample at 50 times a second. If we go across here to the knock column, if knock is occurring, I'm then telling it to sample at 1,000 times a second. So that helps um, limit the amount of memory that's being used by the ECU. We've only got a small amount. We don't want to overwrite the start of the logging um, by logging things too aggressively. Um, and the same goes for some of the other cylinder knock, ignition retard, pre-ignition count. These are at fairly low values when the engine is in base mode or tick over mode. And again, when we're in knock mode, I increase the sampling so we get a bit more of an insight as to what's going on. Um, scroll down the page, the exhaust gas temperature. It doesn't change very rapidly. One hertz is fine at tick over. At high load, when the engine's being driven, five hertz is fine. I'm not too worried about so tracking that a thousand times a second. And that basically is it. We can, um, we can change any uh, channel uh, to record at different frequencies depending on the mode. Um, so we've across the top we've got base that's tick over enhanced mode I'm not using. High load is when the engine is under high stress it's being driven flat out. Lift off is when you've lifted off the throttle you can tell it to record things at a different frequency. Traction control obviously when there's traction events then you can tell it to record at high frequency knock uh, Self-explanatory, there's knock events going on, let's record things at a high frequency. Pit launch, we don't have a pit button on the car to reduce the speed, but we do have launch control. So I am using that to record some of the channels at high frequencies during launch. And gear shift, if I go down to gear voltage, uh, when there's a gear change taking place, I'm actually logging the gear voltage from the potentiometer on the gear barrel 1000 times a second. When the engine's just sitting there ticking over, it's at five times a second. That's quite useful for having a, a more detailed look at the um, accuracy of the gear shift, uh, gear up and gear down, uh, and allows you to do some fine tuning to some of the um, some of the timings in the gear selection settings. Um, so I'm doing all sorts of things down here: not control active, rev limiter active, rear left damper, rear left speed. Uh, again, uh, when the engine's ticking over, five times a second is more than adequate. And then we change that frequency to 20 hertz when the car's being driven. Uh, rear left speed is 50 times a second, uh, when the, again, when the car's being driven. And so on and so forth. It's quite straightforward. If we go back into um, tree mode, we can then go down here. If we haven't to added something and we want to add it, for example, I want to go to the output function and then let's go to um, imagine we have brake light control. I could actually say I want you to show me when the brake light has been operated. Um, that would then change and say event. And then if I save that back to the ECU in the future, when I brake and the brake light comes on, it will record that as a on or off in the data. And we can see that when we're using live view to analyze it. So once you've got your settings um, how you want them, you then do a device and set config and it will then send that data to the ECU uh, for the next time you drive it. And consequently, if you want to get the data from the ECU, you do a get config and it will pull the configuration back 
The most important thing to remember is to save the files regularly. Do file save and uh, give it a late, uh, give it a date uh, and um, in the file name so that you then got lots and lots and lots of different files that you can go back over time. It shows you the config you were running on that particular date and it allows you to backtrack if you think you've started to log something differently to how you did before and you're actually missing out on some data but that, that basically is a live config uh, very easy to use very nice interface uh, quite straightforward and um, i'm finding it very useful